Hey everybody, welcome to the next edition of The Great Franchisee. I'm here with an old friend, Rob Wallace from Two Men in a Truck. We talked earlier this year a little bit about your Allentown location in Pennsylvania. Today we're talking about Butler County. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, doing well. So tell us how Two Men in a Truck has just taken over over there in Ohio. <laughs> well, um, we can speak for the southwestern corner of Ohio. Uh, but um, yeah, we're really happy to expand uh, into the Butler County territory. It was, uh, we had the Cincinnati market. Every other location was ours except for that one. So that completes the, uh, the puzzle for mm -hmm. us in, in that corner of the state. Does that mean that you guys won't be getting a lot of calls from way far away to come bring a truck over and move that you'll actually have a more centralized location for people? Yeah, we we did quite a bit of business up there in the past. Um, so uh, we're familiar with the area. And, and again, it's we're, we're, we do a lot of work in that area um, to begin with. So we we're great. It was great to have the opportunity to add that. And like you said, uh, our base of operations cuts out a little bit of travel time from for the customers that were, were calling us from before. So um, it's a good thing. Sounds great. Okay, so Rob, I know a little bit about your story, but maybe our viewers don't. Can you tell us about your background? Because it is very interesting. <laughs> um, sure. Um, uh, started uh, a long time ago, back in uh, 1996. I was a student at the Ohio State University, um, kind of working my way through, and uh, the job that I had at the time, uh, the place shut down, so I needed to to find a new job, uh, continue my path uh, along the uh, towards my college degree. So um, I just picked up the Ohio State student newspaper and uh, saw the logo and called the company and got an interview that same day and uh, um, had a job. Uh, but when I went home. <laughs> So um, pretty easy process. Um, that was February of 96 and uh, started off as a driver there, obviously, um, and worked my way up uh, over the next year and a half. Uh, I was I was on the trucks and then had an opportunity to help out on in the operations department in the Columbus, Ohio franchise. And then um, just kind of worked my way up from there. And uh, three years after I started, um, just being in the right place at the right time and are growing like crazy and and just more opportunities were presented that I continued to to step forward and take advantage of so as the I was the general manager at the Columbus franchise three years after I started uh, stayed there about uh, for almost 12 years and then uh, when I left there and went to work for a company that did nothing but um, commercial business moves and logistics uh, stayed there for a couple of years and then uh, got back into the the two men and a truck system uh, with uh, Christy and Tripp down in the Charlotte metro area. They had uh, three locations down there at the time. Spent uh, three, three and a half, almost four years down there, and then connected with uh, Mike Lally and have been with him for about eight and a half years. Uh, so, yeah, uh, here and there throughout the system over since 96, but um, it's been a fun ride. You know, what's interesting is you're back home in Ohio, which is cool anyway, right? You got to go back home. But also, yep. the story that you have of starting out on a truck and moving your way through, we've talked before about how how that's the process that you guys as the Lally Group want to have, right? Yeah, it's um, uh, my story is not that uncommon. Um, maybe I've stuck with it a a little, a little longer than some folks <laughs> have so far, but um, yeah, um, not just our group, but all throughout the system. Um, you look for leadership uh, and you see that, you can see that from the drivers that take it seriously, do a good job. Um, they, they want to do what it takes to step forward and take on more and more responsibility, um, bigger leadership roles as you go. So um, when you can identify those, those folks and give them those opportunities to step forward, um, that's definitely a win-win. So we, we keep our eyes open for those individuals and uh, try to help them get started along the, the same path if that's something that they're interested in. And we've talked about how that's actually a system that has worked very well for you guys. Tell us how many locations you have total. 
the uh, Butler Allentown uh, location that we talked about before gets us to 14. So, um, yeah, we're uh, we're excited about the growth that we've had over the past uh, uh, several years, especially. So um, I mentioned eight and a half years with Mike. He had he was adding his fifth location when I started. So we've gone from five to 14 um, and uh, looking to, to continue if we can. You're a good partner there, buddy. <laughs> You've done pretty well. Yep. Did you ever think, um, you know, answering the ad in the college newspaper would, A, get you involved in franchising, and B, get you to where you are today? Uh, absolutely not. I had <laughs> no, uh, no type of plan other than get a job to make money. Um, so that really was happy to get the job, um, and, and, and get what I needed short term. So, so, uh, but, uh, you mentioned, you know, me and other people, um, you hear that a lot. Like, I didn't really think that this would end up being what it, what it ended up being for me. But, um, yeah, at a certain point you realize that, um, you know, you learn a little bit more about the that biz the business at that location how it fits into the larger two men and a truck system um how two men and a truck stacks up against uh, kind of the competition within the market um and it's just uh it doesn't take um you know you, it's, it's pretty easy to see that there's a lot of potential there for people who um are interested in you know just you know doing a good job um that's that's really it's, it's, it's really simple in theory. I mean, we, we pick up furniture, we put it on the truck, we go to another place and we got a really super simple concept, but it's, it's hot. It's hard to execute that, that very simple concept at a really high level and continue doing that over a long period of time. So um, there, there are any number of challenges that, uh, you know, a lot of folks over time will decide that, you know, it's just, it's not worth it. There's gotta be an easier way. So uh, those of us who, who stick with it, it, it ends up being really rewarding because you have a chance to kind of compete every day and, and work to be uh, the biggest and the best, which is, which is what we try to create for our folks, buy, in, buy into something, uh, something bigger. You know, we, we're trying to be the best we can be every day. So when we were kids back in 1996, did you think the brand <laughs> recognition would come this far? Uh, no, again, I starting out, I really had no concept of, you know, you know, this brand or that brand I didn't really, uh, didn't really care that much. But when you, when I start talking to, um, the managers about, you know, what it actually means, um, and, you know, what could possibly be those things, are, you know, it becomes more and more interesting and, and, uh, you buy in more and more over time. So, um, in 96, uh, when we had, you know, two or three trucks on the lot, did I imagine it would be the, the huge operation that it is now? I don't, I don't think my mind even really thought in that way of just, <laughs> just, uh, trying to, uh, make our location the best it could be. And, um, uh, as time's gone on, you have more and more opportunities to, to spread your influence. And, um, it's been pretty amazing to see, you know, that happens all across the country, a lot of great operators in the system trying to, to do the exact same thing every day, identify those leaders and, and continue uh, pushing the brand forward with aggressive growth. And, you know, how do you find those leaders? What are the secrets in the, in the, in the secret recipe there for finding somebody who you think is good on the truck and is going to translate to a good manager in, inside and then be somebody that you guys can invest in and take your time with and um, really pour into? Yeah, well, the good and the bad thing is that there really is no secret. Um, we, uh, we work really hard. Uh, to recruit uh, the number of quality folks that we need um, to hit the, to hit our goals. Um, so uh, they kind of identify themselves over time. Um, during our interview process, uh, we talk about leadership and any, any type of leadership experience that, that they've had that we feel might help them um, fit in a little bit better and, and move forward um, quicker. Um, but it's really up to them to show what they've got um, once they get into the group and, and get going a little bit. And it's actually pretty, it's pretty, 
pretty easy to see uh, who will kind of separate themselves from the rest of the group because it is, it's, I mean, it's obviously it's hard work. You're lifting and carrying furniture all day, every day, eight, 10 hours a day. Not everyone can physically do it. Those who can physically do it to do it, you know, it, it can, it can grind on someone a little bit. You, you you get physically worn out and fatigued. Um, just the folks that are willing, willing and able to just kind of fight through those days like that, still keep a smile on their face, still take care of their customers, still do the job the way it's supposed to be done. They separate themselves and it's up to us as managers to, to reach out to them uh, and let them know that we see that we recognize that and that type of approach to, um, to the job can take you maybe further into the, into the future, further along the, uh, the path um, than you might think. Um, so uh, sometimes uh, people have their own plans. Uh, we're a stop along the way for, for a lot of college kids who are working on a, on a degree that's going to take them a different direction. But um, during their time, we, we feel like we can uh, work with them to develop some, some leadership skills and, and help them out, even if they don't stick around. I know we joked about how you got out for two years, right? And you <laughs> learned your lesson. So tell us about getting out of the business for a couple of years, going into that logistics arena and that space and what you saw, what you experienced and why you came back. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of what you mentioned earlier with the brand recognition um, with, with two men on a truck. Um, we, we do, um, we do a fair amount to, to go out and, and generate business, business development, those kinds of things everybody does. But our phone is always ringing. Um, and that's the biggest thing I noticed once I got into a different company is how hard they had to work to generate uh, phone calls, generate leads, um, because people uh, didn't have that instant recognition of that brand, of that company. Um, so we kind of we definitely have a leg up as as uh, as franchise or franchisees with the brand uh just the recognition that you have um it gets you a lot a lot of phone calls just kind of organically without having to work so quite so hard to to get people to call you people call you it's just you have to have the capacity to to handle it in a lot of cases and that that was not the case um at the other company we were definitely always out there trying to uh um, shake up, shake up business and, and, and keep the, uh, keep the taps flowing, so to speak. But, um, um, the, definitely the biggest difference that I, that I saw being outside the system for those couple of years. And that really speaks to those who are thinking about starting two men in a truck franchises because, you know, the brand recognition is where it's at, right? Mm -hmm. Um, absolutely. We've, uh, we've gone into different, um, different situations, uh, as we've gone for, you know, from, from five to 14 franchises over the past several years. Some of those have been um, acquisitions where those territories have pretty, pretty, pretty good brand recognition already. Some of those have been newer territories where it hasn't been quite so much. Um, but when I say quite so much, it's still there. Folks still know um, about the brand and, and who we are. So um, I can imagine going into those territories with, uh, with an unrecognized, uh, un, you know, brand that hasn't been established yet, um, that life would be just that much more difficult for the first couple of years trying to get people to to just know who you are and, and get out there and be in the community. A lot of that's already uh, um, kind of baked in uh, as part of uh, when you when you agree to be part of the brand. What has Home Office done for you guys um, as a network, really, of franchises? Uh, we are, um, we have a great relationship with home office. We, um, we like to, we like to get them on the phone as often as we can to help us solve problems, just evaluate, uh, you know, ideas. Um, uh, if we're struggling with a particular area at a particular location, we can, we can reach out to them, um, as, as a resource, uh, for ongoing issues and, and problem solving. Um, but then just having, um, having the ability to reach out um, and, and work with them as we've added franchises. Um, you know, they're, they're really helpful with helping us evaluate uh, particular territories, uh, 
demographics and maps and, and different considerations um, where we want to go and, and what we might want to do in the future. Oh, they're always open to a conversation um, and just um, sharing ideas. Um, and it, it's a, it's a really great relationship. We get a lot of support from them. We encourage all of our managers uh, to not be shy about reaching out um, home office. Uh, we, we really leverage that partnership. Uh, it's a, it's a great resource for us. And you know why not, right? You guys pay your franchisees fees and, <laughs> and you deserve to have that, right? You deserve to have that great relationship and those resources. Okay, so let's talk about Ohio, the Buckeye State. You have now mm -hmm. got Butler County. What does the competition look like there for you? Um, and what are your goals for this area, you know, metric-wise? Um, we... Uh, there's a pretty fair amount of, uh, of competition in the area, um, but it's competition that we've, uh, we've grown accustomed to um, being right next door with our other territories in Cincinnati. So we kind of know who the, uh, who the players are uh, in the area um, and, and kind of how they operate and how we differentiate from, from them and, and, and the way they go about things. Um, so just in terms of what we want to accomplish, we want to continue to grow, uh, grow the market share in the area. Um, the, you know, specific revenue targets, uh, you know, we want to, you know, early on, we want to just uh, get our, get a feel, get a, we go in with our best idea for what we hope to get from the territory early on, but it really takes us a, a year to get a feel for, you know, what zips, where are the jobs coming from, where, where would we have some opportunity to go and, uh, and engage with the community a bit more in this part of the territory. Where can we go? What can we do? So really the first, uh, first year or so is we're, we're feeling things out quite a bit that we've got hopes and dreams about what we might be able to pull out of that territory. But um, um, the, the first goal is always to beat what the other folks were putting up. <laughs> when you, it's an acquisition, you, you certainly have to do better than, than the folks that you just bought it from. So that's, uh, we always keep their number. We always keep their numbers uh, where we can see them. Um, and kind of base our growth on what's been done there in the past and, and what we feel like we can do um, when we get our team in and run, start running kind of our processes, our systems. So this group in Cincinnati, I guess my question too is, do you guys compete, you know, with each other within the group? Are you guys <laughs> like, oh, no, we can get this. We got you this week. You know, how does that work um, as a network? Uh it's uh, there's there is a lot of friendly competition. Uh, we encourage that. Um, we if if one team's having a, a big sales day, we encourage them to uh, kind of you know send a send a group email let everybody know. Uh, hey, it's going pretty well over here. How's everyone? How's everyone doing? We actually have a uh, we do a a fun thing that uh, we call the lunch. So if 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 a particular location hits. Uh, books a percentage of their monthly goal um, on, on, a, on any given day. Uh, if they hit their target percentage, we'll buy the following day. Uh, and when that happens, we refer to that as the lunch train coming to town. So um, that's always fun to see when, <laughs> when someone schedules the lunch train and uh, then the, the fun uh, emails and everything starts, starts flying around a little bit. So yeah, we encourage that. It's, uh, it's, Competition, friendly competition is fun um, and people like to win. So, uh, yeah. And being on a truck, you know, like how to keep morale high. What a great way to keep morale high within the company, you know, and in and, and that small franchise, maybe right there competing with each other and just making it fun. Right. I mean, life is too short. Um, I know you know that more than anybody. Yeah, we um, been a long time since I was actually uh, out there carrying the furniture around. It's probably better for everyone that way. But um, yeah, certainly the office folks uh, take advantage of the, they enjoy the lunch train uh, quite a bit. We do a lot of other stuff for the front line, uh, front line guys, movers and drivers. Uh, when we have a when we have a safety meeting, uh, we buy their attention with uh, you know breakfast and. <laughs> do try to do different fun things for them uh, along the way as well. They're, you know, they're not always super interested to hear 
the, 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 the sales, sales team is, uh, is working on, but um, try to keep everybody connected and let them know, um, help them understand the sales team success is actually for everyone because we've and things are going well for us. So, yeah, we do a lot in that area to try to uh, just uh, step back from the uh, the uh, the day to day and kind of have a little fun uh, here and there. Well, the Lally Group has got it going on. We know that you guys are star franchisees, and right now, today, I mean, Rob Wallace, he's the great franchisee. So, hey, thanks for being with us, and we wish you the best of luck in Butler <laughs> County and. Can't wait to get an update. Thank you for having me. It's been fun to talk to you and uh, always enjoy the conversation. Awesome. We'll talk to you soon.